In this tutorial, we will learn how to remove and add variable names from a data frame object. So to start off in RStudio, you should see something that looks like this when you open up a new session. Here we have our console. I'm going to go to Edit and Clear Console from the drop-down menu to clear out the console here so we can start with a blank slate, so to speak. Now, instead of typing commands directly into our console, it's often better to use an R script editor or specifically an R script file so that we can track our work, add annotations, and make our work generally more reproducible. So to do that, I'm going to File, New File, R script. Again, that's File, New File, R script from the dropdown. And now we have an R script editor window open. So one of the nice things about an R script editor is it makes it easy to do things like annotations and to save our work. So to do an annotation, I'm going to create a hashtag, and then to the right of it, I'll write some type of note or annotation. Here, I'm going to note what is the purpose of today's tutorial, which is removing and adding variable names from a data frame object. And so what's the first thing that we need to do here? Well, the first thing that we need to do is to set our working directory. And I will point out at this point, my working directory that I'm going to set will almost certainly be different than the one that you need to set. So how do we set our working directory? Well, our working directory is going to be, in this case, the folder where we've saved the data file that we'd like to read in for this tutorial today. So if I go to my Windows Explorer here, I can see my H drive, our workshop folder, so this path right here, and within that, there is this file here, which is called PERS data with a capital P and a capital D. It's a comma separated values or .csv file. This is what I'd like to read in here for today's tutorial. So I need to set my working directory as this path here, my H drive and R workshop. Again, your path will almost certainly be different that you need to set your working directory to. Okay, so to do so, I'll show you two quick ways. The first is using the setwd function from base R, which means we don't need a separate package to access this function. It comes standard with your base R installation that RStudio runs on. All right, so it's setwd, all lowercase there, and within the parentheses, we type in a single argument. So within the parentheses, first type in quotation marks, and within the quotation marks, you can type in the exact name of your path, which in my case is my H drive R workshop, I remember that in general, you want to adhere to case and space sensitivity when working with R, as it's often sensitive to those things when working with function names, with paths, and so forth, especially when it comes to spaces. All right, so here I can put my cursor anywhere on the line or highlight the whole line and click Run. And down here in my console, I get confirmation that I've set my working directory to my H drive R workshop folder, and that's where that data file lives, and that is where I'm going to have the subsequent read function I'm going to use read in that data file to our R environment. Now, if you have a long path where at the very end is the folder where you saved your data file and it's hard to commit that to memory or it'd just be a lot to type, another way of setting your working directory is by going to set session, set working directory, and choose directory in the dropdowns. Again, it's that session, set working directory, and choose directory. And then you can just navigate to whatever folder on your computer has that data file that you'd like to set as your working directory. So whenever you arrive at the, the specific folder that you'd like to set your working directory to, you can just click open here. By default, it'll open up where your current working directory is, which for me is my H drive, our workshop folder, and that's where I want to go. So I'm going to click open and you'll see now we get a new line in our console and I could copy that and pretending like this isn't here, I could then paste it in, and this just makes it easier the next time I start a new session, instead of having to do the drop downs, now I have the code here written so I can just quickly come in and run, and I've set my working directory. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do, and I'll make another annotation here, is we are going to read in the .csv file, and this is the .csv file we're gonna be working with today. We're gonna read it in as a data frame, and then assign that data frame to an object that we can subsequently reference. Okay, so there's different ways that you can read in the data. I prefer to use the read underscore CSV function from the reader package, which is part of the tidyverse pack, uh, universe of packages. And so if you've never used the reader package before, you'll need to go to install.packages, access this function, which is another one that comes standard from base R. Again, that's install.packages, all lowercase. And as a sole parenthetical argument, and within quotation marks, within the parentheses, just type in the exact name of the package. So in this case, it's reader, all lowercase, and there's no E between the D and the R, so it's R-E-A-D-R here. 
I have recently installed this package, so to save time, I'm not going to run this, but you almost certainly will need to if you've never used the reader package before and you or you need to update it. You could just run this line here and that'll do it. But what you will need to do if you're starting a new session and you haven't accessed the reader package within your session thus far is you use the library function here to call up that package so you can access its functions. And specifically, we want to access that read underscore CSV function I've mentioned already. So it's the library function is just library, all lowercase, and as a sole parenthetical argument here, and you don't need to use quotation marks, you can just put reader, all lowercase, again, that's R-E-A-D-R, -E it's the exact name of the package there. And I will click run here to access it because this is a session where I have not yet used that reader package and accessed it. You do see a warning message here. I am using the version of R that's 4.0.2. So it's just giving me a little warning message here that I should probably update my R version to be consistent with um, the version um, that the reader package was most recently built on. Okay, so now, and I'll add a space here for clarity, I'm going to use the read underscore CSV function to read in the data. So first, type in the name of the function, which is read underscore CSV, all lowercase, read underscore CSV. Again, this is from that reader package. And then assuming you've set your working directory within the parentheses, just type in the quotation marks and then the exact name of the data file from your working directory that you'd like to read in. Again, the data file I'd like to read in from the working directory folder is PERS data with a capital P and a capital D. Just to make sure I get the exact name, I'm gonna copy that exactly, the name of the file, and it is a comma separated values file or .csv, so I need to remember that as well. Paste it into the quotation marks here, and then be sure to add the .csv file extension here, and to let the read underscore CSV function that know that this is in fact a .csv file here. Now we're ready to read in the data. So putting your cursor anywhere on the line or highlighting the whole line, do that and then click run. And what you'll see here is we've read in the data, but we haven't assigned it to a data frame object. We've just read in the data and it prints directly to our console. To assign it to a data frame object, you can use the left-handed arrow operator here, which is the less than symbol followed by the minus symbol to create an arrow here pointing to the left, or you could use the equal symbol or operator if you'd like to do that. So we'll use the left-handed arrow operator in this case. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is just come up with a name for the data frame object. To keep things simple here, I'm just gonna call this data frame object DF. So DF for data frame, fairly generic there, all lowercase. And so case sensitivity does matter here. And you can name it whatever you'd like, as long as it doesn't start with a numeral or a special character like a dash, for example, okay? All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is click run here. And so now you'll see we have an object in our global environment that we can look at. So if we click here on this object, it's our DF object for our data frame object, and we see that there's nine observations and five variables. And this is just a toy data frame that we can work with here today to illustrate how to remove and to add variable names from this data frame. So what we wanna do first is, let's imagine we read in this data frame, or we've been working with this data frame object, and now we'd like to remove the first, uh, the first row, which happens to be the variable names here in a data frame object. So we wanna remove ID, last name, first name, start date, and gender here. Okay, and there might be some different reasons for doing this. Perhaps your next step is that you'd like to export or write this data frame object to a .csv file uh, or some other data format file, file format so that then you could use it in another program. There's other programs, for example, I use the M plus statistical software program on occasion, and that particular software program does not um, allow for the, the, actual, the actual variable names to be in your data file. You have to keep those separate and enter them separately in your syntax. And so that would be an example, in my case, why I might remove the variable names from a data frame object. Okay, so to remove, I'm making a note here using the hashtag there, an annotation rather, to remove variable names, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna use the names function. You could also use the call names function, C-O-L names function, um, but we'll just use the names function, it's shorter, it's names all lowercase, and this function by itself, if you were to just put the exact name of an object, your data frame object specifically in it, it'll return your variable name. So watch what happens if we just use the names function by itself and click run. You'll see down here in our console, we see those 
those five variable names that we already saw there. Okay, but what if we'd like to remove those variable names from our data frame object? Well, fortunately, it's really simple. All we do is use our friend, the left-handed arrow operator that we used before to assign our data frame to a data frame object. And now we can use that left-handed arrow operator and to the right of it, put null. And this is just saying essentially, remove the names from this data frame object here. Okay, so really simple script. Just make sure null is in ULL and all capitalized. All right, so the next thing we can do is put our cursor somewhere on the line or highlight that line and click run. And so we get blue font down here, which is good. If you get red, that usually means something went wrong. Maybe you didn't type in the exact name of the data frame correctly or the name of the function correctly, or you did not capitalize all the letters in null. Okay, so now let's take a peek at our data frame object again in our global environment and see if this worked. So click on it. Okay, so now you will see that those variable names were removed and defaults were put in their place of v1 through v5. Another way we can view this is by going to print using the print function from BASAR, that's print all lowercase, type in the exact name of our data frame object, which is lowercase d, lowercase f, and click run. And you can see down here that the variable names have been removed. We still have the raw data that was contained within each one of those variables, or rather within the columns. Uh, columns and and so that's still there, we just don't have the variable names. So what if we'd like to add variable names to a data frame object? Well, that's relatively simple as well. Now to add variable names, this is something, for example, you can imagine a scenario where maybe you get a data file that doesn't have the variable names in it, you read it in, and then need to actually manually add in the data or the, the variable names to your data frame object. That is entirely um, a possible situation you might come across when getting data files that have come from different types of programs, maybe survey platforms and things like that. All these programs can operate slightly differently in terms of the types of data and the format of the data that they export. And so you might have a scenario where you need to add the variable names in yourself. Okay, so to do that, we are actually going to, let's copy the code right here that we wrote to remove the variable names, paste it below. Let's remove the null portion of this. And all we're going to do now is use the C function, and that's C lowercase, which is our combined function, which is what we use to create a vector or a, a vector of different um, values or scores, for example. We can do that creating the C function. So it's just going to combine elements together for us. So within the parentheses, we can type in our first argument and the first argument will be this variable here. So you do it in sequential order. So we can see that the first variable from left to right that we need to replace is the ID, the employee ID. We could put in anything we'd like here. I'm going to do try to recreate the original variable names by first, make sure that you use quotation marks here and then type in the variable name that you'd like. I'm just gonna do lowercase ID for the employee ID there. Now outside of the quotation marks, add a comma and commas within our function parentheses separate different arguments. Our second argument here, which happens to be an element in the vector is going to be our second variable. So I'll move on. This is our last name column here. So I'm gonna use quotation marks and I'm gonna type in last name there. I'm gonna keep this all lowercase, but you could type in whatever you'd like there. I'm gonna do another comma to separate that element or argument from the next quotation marks, the next column over is first name. Another column outside of those quotation marks, next column is, that's our start date there. I'll just type in start date. And then finally, last comma is going to separate our second to last argument or element from our last element, which happens to be a variable name here. And it's going to be gender here is the last column. So I'm gonna type in gender. All right, I'll open up this window so you can see this a little bit better. So just you wanna make sure that you have the exact number of elements, or in this case, variable names listed here within the C function as corresponds to the number of columns with missing variable names in your data frame. So here we have one, two, three, four, five variable names that we're going to put in. And here's one, two, three, four, five columns. Okay, we should be ready to go. Now put your cursor somewhere on the line or highlight it and click run. Okay, we get blue font down here. That usually means things worked just fine. So let's click on the data frame object here that we've updated by adding in variable names, 
here in our global environment. And now you see we're back to having variable names here. So this is just a, a straightforward way using the names function. You can remove variable names and you can use the names function to add in variable names using R.